Hey guys, so uh, sorry about yesterday. Um, I didn't post at all. Uh, I meant to, and then things just kind of got crazy. Um, nothing too, you know, uh, emergency or anything like that. Just kind of the, the day got away away from me, and um, it seems like everything's, uh, lots of things fall on Thursdays uh, for some reason. I had a board meeting uh, at night, so... Um, so we are at Friday, a little past 11 on the East Coast here. Uh, I may continue this into next week. Um, we'll see how I feel and, and just, uh, again, the feedback from you guys. But uh, I have a bunch of questions here from uh, Buono B. Uh, I should probably find out your first name. Uh, <laughs> appreciate all the questions. So uh, how do you manage yourself as a one-man shop? Do you have tricks for making sure you don't allow yourself to get distracted? Um, I've really come to, to really appreciate, uh, Charlie Munger's advice to not multitask and uh, even, even posting these videos and, you know, uploading them to YouTube and sharing things on Twitter. I, I find my mind just craving, okay, you know, what's that feedback, that, that instant feedback. And, and I know that that's not healthy and it, and yet it, it still happens. <clears throat> so minimizing distractions, uh, knowing yourself, I think is, is key too. So, uh, if, if you have more energy in the mornings versus the afternoon, if you have your kid schedules or any kind of other, you just kind of have to work with what you have. And, um, the book deep work by Cal Newport really helped me uh, realize that anybody can do it. Uh, and, you know, no matter what your job is, no matter what's thrown at you, uh, really just kind of sitting down and, and focusing and, um, yeah. So how do you manage your emotional well being? Uh, I know some people who run small businesses freelance and they're unable to clock out. So I like to think I don't struggle with this. I mean, certainly if a client, emails me, I'm going to feel, I mean, it, de it depends. So I'll, I'll even go into that. So uh, I try to set the expectation to clients that I'm responsive, but if um, I, I also don't, I don't want to be, you know, uh, I, I just set, set the, the, the tone or the example that I won't be responding to emails at, you know, nine o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. Um, you know, because because what I do for them, it's so important that I have that focus, um, that it would actually be serving them, not serving them, uh, by by doing those things. Now, if an emergency comes up for whatever reason, um, you know, all my clients have my cell phone number. I mean, I, I'm 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 always available if it's if it's that emergency. But generally, I mean, I don't know why that would be the case, um, but uh, I mean, my, my, I'm fortunate to have a, a wife that's supportive. And she, you know, we, we just, we have our routines and we have the kids and, um, that I, I want to be a, a better dad. And, um, you know, my, the, the anti, uh, example from Buffett, like I, I don't want to ignore my family to build the business. Um, I mean, some of that happens from time to time, but, but not to the extent that Buffett did, um, becoming so myopic, uh, you know, you, you need that disconnect and, and I'm still working on, it. I mean, it's by no, by no means perfect. Um, how do I differentiate myself from, from other managers? How do you pitch yourself to clients and why you, um, well, I'm still working on this, right? Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I, again, I, so I like to think that I have, uh, a, a differentiating factor, uh, having grown up in a family of small business owners, been around business my whole life. I spent a decade in commercial credit lending to businesses, so I see the risks first. I've seen a lot of different businesses. Um, I like to think I have uh, sort of that uh, keystone to all of this, which is the temperament part of things. Where um, you know, I I, I know I'll just I'll, I know I'm probably at best an average analyst. Let's call it that. Um, but I think I have above average temperament. I think that's what really gives me an advantage. Um, but of course, I the thing I, I also struggle with is how do I communicate that to the world? Um, 
you know, because for me, you know, okay, geez, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to outperform the S&P maybe by a couple percentage points over the long term. That sounds boring. I, I'm not a great, you know, over the top salesman and, and I need to learn some of that. Um, so I, I've, I've been just, I've been really just trying to tell it like it is and have conversations with potential clients and clients and just say, you know, here's what I'm about. Here's how I uh, go about looking at businesses, and I, I'm hoping that this uh, watch list investing, this uh, paid and, and unpaid newsletter, um, uh, the unpaid is on Substack. Um, I should promote it. Watchlistinvesting.com. Um, I hope that that you know when I have a, a potential new client um, or I'm on or onboarding a client. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that they have read my analysis of, you know, my, my shareholder or my, uh, my letters to clients, my annual letters to clients. Um, now that I have these newsletters, I'll send them those so they can see how I think about businesses, how I think about stocks, how I think about, um, position sizing and, um, and all of that. And so I have a little pitch book that I sent to investors, uh, and, um, you know, I, I'm, I, I, again, I like to think that I can use my size to my advantage. So um, I don't have any mandates in terms of, oh, geez, I need to be boxed in and I can only buy large cap, small cap, mid cap, value, you know, whatever, whatever it is, all these other things that Wall Street tends to dice up uh, the investment landscape. I don't have any of that. I can just go where the value is and, you um, and that leads me into all kinds of different directions. But why why intentionally shrink your investment universe? So um, I think I have some advantages. I, I think um, I've done well by the clients that I have. And I hope, uh, I, hope I can communicate that to uh, potential new partners as well. Um, what else? Uh, just uh, something else that came to mind in terms of like one man shop. Uh, you know, I just, just renewed my uh, professional liability insurance. That, that was... You know, back and forth with the, the insurance broker, um, had some questions, had to review it, had to set up the payment. So um, I, I, I like, um, th there's definitely a, a disadvantage to having having it, it be a one-man shop, but um, I, I know I have, I have friends that in, in the industry that have, uh, have partnerships, and, and I think that can work really well. Um, you know, like the guys at Focus Compounding, for example, I know, uh, I don't know them all that well, but from what I've observed and heard, um, you know, they're, they're both in tuned to what they're doing, obviously, in the investment side. But um, I think Jeff is very much the, you know, read all day, the annual reports, and Andrew, I think, takes care of sort of the business side. He's going to be the one renewing the insurance and going to the bank if needed, um, if, if they don't uh, have any additional employees. But that two-man uh, thing can, can be really good, uh, provided you're on the same wavelength, uh, because uh, partners, partnerships uh, can be challenging, they can be difficult, 